Um, uh, we're here in the zoology department at the University of Cambridge, uh, next to a rather depressing cage, uh, uh, next to a depressing case. In the foreground, there's a dodo, the most complete specimen of a dodo. In the background, there's a great orb, both of which have gone extinct. So if we're to stop further species from going extinct, it is really important that we learn what's effective and how we can save these species. And in doing that, behavior is really important. Human behavior is important. We want to understand why losses occur and how humans can stop losses from occurring. Animal behavior is also really important. Changing the behavior of animals is often really critical. So for example, quite often we want to encourage species to occur in a site. We want to work out how to pull them in. Uh, how to use decoys, what food brings them in, etc. Sometimes we want to discourage animals from using a site. For example, how do we stop bats from flying into turbines? How do we change their behaviour so they don't uh, commit suicide? Sometimes we just want to change animals' behaviours. We want to discourage predators from eating those species that particular conservation concern. We might want to encourage animals to pair up in captivity. We might want to train animals so that once they're released, they're more likely to survive. They're more likely to recognize predators and um, learn how to avoid them. Or they're more likely to pair up because of the way they've been brought up in captivity. There's all sorts of tricks that you can learn. And understanding animal behavior is really critically important from improving conservation. The challenge, in fact, the real scandal, is that conservation practice very often doesn't use the evidence that is already available. And so here we're committed to trying to change that. We've set up a project called the Conservation Evidence Project. It's got a web website, conservationevidence.com. It's got, we produce synopses uh, such as this, which reviews um, over 400 interventions, testing what works on bird conservation, or we have our book, What Works in Conservation, which for a wide range of different groups tells you what's effective and what isn't. And the secret of what we do is we read the global evidence and then summarize it. And this means that we can say what works or what doesn't work for a whole range of different activities. So for example, if you want to stop bats from killing themselves when they cross a road, actually it's the cars that kill the bats when crossing the road, what do you do about that? How do you, how do you encourage them to fly at the right height or not? And we know that there are interventions that have been suggested and are widely used that just don't work. We need to work out how we stop doing things that don't work. But also, for when you release individuals, we know that there's a lot of different methods that can vary in their successful, uh, as to how successful they are. So if you're a practicing conservationist, we ask you to please read the literature before you carry something out. Please don't just guess. Uh, we know that that's unacceptable, likely to read in the wrong, lead to the wrong solutions. If, as most of you are, you're a researcher, we'd ask you to think about, can you test measures related to conservation to see whether or not they're effective? Because we don't have sufficient tests. In many of these areas, we have far fewer tests than we really need. And you can make a real difference by testing what works and what doesn't work. So I hope that you have a good conference. But more importantly, I hope that you will join us in this global evidence, this global exercise of trying to transform conservation practice by testing what works, making that global evidence available to everyone, and using it so that conservation practice becomes a lot more effective.